Hello guys, welcome back and you're here. Today the video is about literature. I will narrate to you a novel by Oscar Wilde. The name is The Canterville Ghost. I hope you like it. Let's do it. The Canterville Ghost most grand old houses have a family ghost of some kind. Sometimes it is a quiet and kindly ghost, and sometimes it is a noisy one, always banging doors and crashing about in chains. The ghost at Canterville Chase is one of the noisy kind, and the family can't get any sleep at night. So Lord Canterville sells the house to Mr. Heron B. Otis, who is an American and not at all worried about ghosts. In fact, Mr. and Mrs. Otis and their children, Washington, pretty Virginia, and the twins, two noisy little boys, are very happy to live in a house with a ghost. But the ghost is not happy. His job is to frighten people, and the Otis family aren't frightened by any of his best tricks. Their hair doesn't turn white, they don't run away in terror, they don't faint, they don't even scream, and the artist twins know more tricks than the poor ghost will ever know. Part 1. The artist family comes to Canterville. When Hiran B. Otis, the American businessman, bought the house called Canterville Chase, people told him that he was doing a very dangerous thing. Everybody knew that there was a ghost in the house. Lord Canterville himself told Mr. Otis all about it. We don't like to live in the house ourselves, he said. Too many of my family have seen the ghost. My wife's grandmother, the Duchess of Bolton, is one of them. One night, while she was dressing for dinner, two skeleton hands were put on her shoulders. She has been ill for years because of that, and my wife never got any sleep there because of all the noises at night. Lord Canterville, answered Mr. Otis, I will buy both the house and the ghost. I come from a modern country, and we can buy nearly everything in America, but not ghosts. So, if there really is a ghost in the house, we can send it home to America and people will pay to go and see it. I'm afraid that the house really does have a ghost, said Lord Canterville, smiling. Perhaps there are no ghosts in your country, but our ghost has been in the house for 300 years, and it will always appear before the death of one of the family. Very well said Lord Canterville. If you're happy to have a ghost in the house, that's all right. But please remember that I did tell you about it. And so Mr. Hiran B. Otis bought the house, and a few weeks later he and his family went down to Canterville Chase on the train. Mrs. Otis was a very beautiful woman and looked just as English as an English woman. American people are really no different from English people, but they do, of course, speak a different language. Her eldest son, Washington, was a good-looking young man with a wonderful smile, who was famous at all the London parties for his fine dancing. Miss Virginia E. Otis was a sweet little girl of 15 with big blue eyes. She loved to ride horses and could ride faster than a lot of men. One day, the young Duke of Cheshire saw her on horseback and immediately asked her to marry him. But his family sent him back to school the next day. After Virginia came the twins, two happy, noisy little boys who were always laughing and playing tricks. It was a lovely July evening when the family got off the train. The fields and trees looked beautiful in the golden sunshine. The birds were singing sweetly and the sky was a bright blue. But when they arrived at Canterville Chase, 
storm clouds suddenly appeared in the sky. Then, ten or twelve large black birds flew down over their heads, and big drops of rain began to fall. An old woman in a black dress was standing in the doorway of the house, waiting to meet them. This was Mrs. Umney, the housekeeper. Welcome to Canterville Chase, she said. They followed her into the library, a long, dark room with a high window at one end. Here, tea was ready for them, so they took off their coats and sat down. Suddenly, Mrs. Otis saw a dark red stain on the floor near the fireplace. Is that a stain on the floor there? she asked. Yes, Mrs. Otis, said Mrs. Umney quietly. It's a blood stain. Oh, that's terrible, cried Mrs. Otis. I can't have blood stains on my floors. It must go. The old woman smiled and again answered in a quiet voice. It is the blood of Lady Eleanor de Canterville, she said. Her husband, Sir Simon de Canterville, murdered her in 1575 while she was standing just there in that place. He lived for another nine years after her death, but then he disappeared, very strangely and suddenly. Nobody ever found his body, but his ghost was still in the house and will not rest. The blood stain is famous. Visitors come here especially to see it. People have tried to clean it, but it will not go away. Of course it will, cried Washington Otis. Pinkerton's famous stain cleaner will clean it up in a second. And before the housekeeper could stop him, he was cleaning the floor with a small black stick. A minute later, the blood stain was gone. There you are, he said, smiling at the others. Pinkerton can clean anything. But at these words, the storm outside suddenly began. A terrible flash of lightning lit up the room, and a second later came a great crash of thunder. Everyone jumped up at the sound of the thunder, and Mrs. Emily fainted. What terrible weather this country has, said Mr. Otis. He sat down again and lit a cigarette. Mrs. Emily lay on the floor with her eyes closed. Mrs. Otis looked at her. My dear Hiram, she cried. What can we do with a woman who faints? Tell her she has to pay some money, said Mr. Otis. If she breaks a cup of something, she has to pay for it. So tell her to pay if she faints. She won't faint after that. At this, Mrs. Emily immediately sat up, but she looked very unhappy. Be careful. Trouble is coming to this house, she said, her voice shaking. I have seen things here which are too terrible to describe. For night after night, I have not closed my eyes in sleep. Mr. Otis gave her a warm smile. My wife and I are not afraid of ghosts, Mrs. Omni. The old housekeeper got shakily to her feet. You Americans are so strong, she said. And so kind. You know, I have worked here for many, many years at the same pay. And... Uh, okay, Mrs. Emily, we'll pay you more money, said Mr. Otis, still smiling. Oh, thank you, dear Mr. Otis and dear Mrs. Otis. Thank you very much. So that's all for today. Follow the story. I hope you liked the narration. Keep reading, keep listening, keep practicing. Subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Peace out.